Hi everyone, Alvisak here. I have a uh, video for you today for informational purposes only um, that I've entitled Bilateral Stimulation and Imagery. And um, bilateral stimulation I'll sometimes referred to as BLS. I'm using three letters instead of two in this case. Okay, so um, first of all, I think it's just interesting how bilateral stimulation is used today. For example, it's used to help individuals dealing with anxiety and trauma and depression. Uh, in fact, I did a video a while back on a book uh, that was entitled Walking Your Blues Away, and it basically focused on bilateral uh, exercises to encourage better uh, brain functionality. Okay, um, neurolinguistic pro programming, you know, uses a type of uh, bilateral movement or lateral movement as, as well. Now, I first remember seeing bilateral stimulation. I didn't label it as such, but bilateral stimulation in movies, you know, where you'd see a hypnotist um, that would induce trance by swinging a pocket watch on a chain, you know, back and forth in front of the client. And the, you know, client's eyes would follow back and forth watching the movement of the watch and listening to the hypnotist. Okay, that was a hypnotic induction technique. Um, and of course, when I started taking uh, hypnosis classes, uh, hypnotic induction was done differently, or at least the, the way I was taught. You know, the typical induction method, for example, would use a fixed point that you would look at above eye level. Um, and then um, you know, it kind of made your eyes a little bit tired, you know, and then you'd be more likely to, to actually close your eyes. Um, but in either case, uh, imagery was often a large part of the treatment. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to use uh, hypnosis to get over a fear of public speaking, um, after induction imagery, you know, seeing myself comfortably giving a speech would be part of the treatment. Okay. And now BLS today is often paired with imagery to get individuals, you know, into a safe place or whatever term, uh, you know, you want to use. I mean, you could use Eden or comfort or, you know, whatever you want to label it as. Uh, in fact, it's typically done as a processing precursor uh, to EMDR. Yeah, we can talk, talk about EMDR some other time. Um, in any case, um, I tried BLS um, paired with imagery and I liked it, so um, I thought I'd talk about it. And, you know, what does it look like? Well, let me go, uh, I'll go through a simple example. Uh, but first, um, uh, if I'm kind of keyed up and want to relax, I would choose a scene that would be calming. Okay. Now, if I were depressed, I would uh, more likely pick a scene that would be more uh, invigorating. Okay, now say that I that I want to relax, you know, just bring my stress level down. I'm not working on a specific uh, target behavior, you know, such as improving public speaking or something like that. Um, now, for me, I have certain places in nature that would meet, you know, the criteria for, you know, like a being a calm spot and it's usually uh, a beach type scenario um, and I would label it something like you know maybe corona you know after the commercials you know which are very uh, relaxing or I could name it corona del mar which is the name of a beach fairly close to where I live um, and what I would want to do is I would want to incorporate uh, my senses you know uh, visual auditory olfactory tactile taste you know and include that um, in my imagery. Um, so I, what you would do, or what I would do, you know, is find a comfortable, quiet place, you know, at least when you're first starting to do this. And then I would choose what person uh, you would use to talk to yourself. You know, are you going to use first person, I, like I see the beach, or, you know, third person, you see uh, the beach, you know, that type of thing. Um, then you're going to take a deep breath, you'll exhale. Typically, I would close my eyes. Um, and then I could tap on my arms or you could be on your 
knees, you know, whatever you wanted to, to do. And you tap just as long as you needed to. At least when I did it, I tapped it as long as I needed to. And then you provide a narrative. So um, I'll go through a real quick uh, little example. So I can let you know what I'm talking about. So I would take a, a nice deep breath and exhale. And I would tap on my arms. Okay. And then I would do the narrative, which would be something like, I see myself walking to Corona. And as I approach Corona, I notice that I'm becoming more and more relaxed. I am there. I see and hear the waves gently lapping on the shore. I smell and taste the salt air. A slight spray of ocean water feels cool upon my skin. I let my body relax and feel it gently melt in the warm sun. My breathing is calm and rhythmic. My heartbeat is slow and rhythmic. With each breath, I feel more and more relaxed. I am in a complete state of relaxation. I allow myself to enjoy this feeling. I just allow myself to enjoy this feeling. I allow myself to enjoy this feeling. I allow myself to enjoy this feeling. And then, as I decide to leave Corona, I walk away. Noticing that as I leave, I am keeping that sense of peace and calmness within me. So that's, um, you know, that's one example. And of course, you can tailor, um, you know, your narrative to, to your own preferences. And like I said, you know, typically I would, I would close my eyes uh, when I do the complete thing, but I wanted to do a little reading there. Um, one last thing. Now, if you were to um, practice this frequently, you know, it starts to become automatically, meaning that, that you could quickly induce, you know, a sense of calm. And you might only have to like, you know, tap on your arms or just say the name of the place to feel calm, you know, Corona. Um, and also, that, that's because it's classical conditioning, basically. Uh, and also, if uh, you become proficient at this in a quiet place, uh, you may want to slowly start adding some distractions or noises and see how you do in terms of still inducing a sense of calm. It's just kind of like, you know, a different level. Anyway, I hope that was um, interesting. It's, it was fun for me when I did it myself.